Hello, welcome to Pantheon of the Geeks. You join us for an unboxing of Gangs of Rome, Blood on the Aventine. Yes, Blood. we have just literally come from Harlequins in Preston. Yep. Where we got this. Uh, from a demo mm -hmm. game with Paul from War Banner. Thank you, Paul. Another one. So if you just watch this, it will be well. Thank you very much. It was very cool. It was. Uh, and he gave us a free model as well for having the demo. Mm -hmm. And there it is. Very awesome. Yeah. I always like free models, yes. especially ones I haven't seen on the website. I did have a look on the website uh, before we went to the event. Yeah, we've done a bit of looking up on this. I mean, I, yeah. s I saw it on um, Harley Quinn's Facebook page saying that they were doing a, a demo day today. Yeah. Um, I then looked into it because it had the word Rome in it, and I'm interested in all things Roman. She is. That's close. That's close back. Rome. Oh, yeah. History. Yeah. I mean, I like pirates, but there we go. Yeah. <laughs> you might see in the future. <gasps> Anyway, uh, right, so, yeah, so anyway, back to the Gang of Rome, yeah. Blood Never Turn. This is the box. Uh, this is what you get with it. If you've not seen this, um, I won't be surprised if you've not seen this, but it is out there. There's on Warlord Games' site, uh, if that's, a, that's the most popular site I can think of its own. Mm -hmm. It's probably on all like, the, the standard uh, FLGs as well. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. So, the idea behind it is you have two gangs. Mm -hmm. And the gangs are fighting in the streets of Rome, each for their own senator who yeah. has paid them to go and wipe out the other senator's gang, basically. It is based on pretty good history because there were gangs of Rome. Which there was. Were, they got behind senators to fund them and, send, and they helped the senators, senators help them and so forth. Yes. I scratch my back, you scratch my back, kind mm -hmm. of thing going on. That happened all the time in Rome. So and, and sometimes the gang actually killed the senator, whether yeah, they liked it, it or not. Yeah, well, well it did happen. <laughs> That's not be around the bush. Claudius and Milo. So, uh, as you can see from the, the symbol here, we've got Swiss of Precision on here as well. Mm -hmm. That's uh, something that does terrain. There is some terrain here. There is. And we've seen this terrain in the demo. It's excellent. It's awesome, actually. Um, and we've had Swiss stuff before. Love it. Mm -hmm. um, the company has made it War Banner. Uh, but you can go to Gangs of Rome. If you want to look at this, there it is on the front, uh, and have a look at it yourself. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to unbox this. So everything you get in the box, there should be two gladii. Gladius? Gladius? Mm -hmm. Gladius. Know. Is, is, it, is there a plural? Um, Denario. Denario. Various cards, uh, Roman numeral dice, mm -hmm. which aren't just D6s. No. They are D6s, but they're not D6s. Uh, we'll go into that um, when we play the game. We got some pebbles. Um, Not for decimation purposes. Well, actually, I thought it was for you pick up a black pebble, you get beaten to death. I thought yeah, it was that, that, that's, that's the worst thing. I, I got given the bag, told to pick out a pebble. I picked out a black one and I was like, ah! Yeah. So, yeah. So, if you know anything about decimation, that was basically the wrong punishment. Yeah. yeah. But no, that's not what this is for. This is for activations. Yes. Um, and obviously, the cool temple set we've got there. Yeah. There are seven miniatures in this, mm -hmm. uh, two sets of three gangs. And the one that only comes in this set, which is the guy carrying what I'm told is a tile, but it looks like a book to yes. me. Yes. Um, and then the cards for each of the gangs. I, I'm already sort of going into this. Oh, okay. Uh, no, there we go. Obviously, you can download the rules for this for free. Mm -hmm. I did download the rules to be able to them last night. Uh, just before we went to the demo as well, so it can stand a little bit better. Um, quite succinct. It's quite straightforward actually, yeah. it's very um, easy to uh, yeah. understand and play. So, we have, these are the Denarii, which is on the wooden slat. We've got the Gladius in there as well. We also have the bases, which are two part bases, which you can see in there. And we'll get those out in a second. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the models, I believe that's three of the gang members, that, and another three of the gang members, there, and then we have the angry uh, person with the book, we've got our pebbles there. Mm -hmm. Those are the um, cards that have like the weapons on, so yep. we've got various weapons. They're wrong numeral dance. And, and those must be the, the gangs, the gangs cards. cards themselves. Right, okay. Uh, also in here we have a quick guide. What's in the box? And blood on the oven. I think that's the scenario that comes with this. Yeah, cool. We have the actual book, which is always nice to look in, in, yeah. in person. 
nice shiny book. Quick reference guide on the back. We'll go more into this in the next video when we actually play it. Play it. And then I think it's going to take the time in this video is constructing the under construction temple, ironically. Um, so this is the Swiss Precision Temple under construction. I don't know. You, I've, I didn't actually have a look, so you can get this off the website. You probably can. I know you can get a fully constructed temple. Mm -hmm. And I know you can get plenty of sets that work with this and other games on Swiss as well. Um, I can smell that. The that wood smell. Wood. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> right, so what's in the bag? Um, in the bag we have. Um, Gladius for you. Gladius for me. Uh, Gladius for me. So we can now fight. That fight. That's always going to happen now. That was really uh, that bad. Was, that was that really was bad idea. It's like putting lightsabers in the Star Wars one. <laughs> so that's the that's actually the rulers. So where it's got little yeah. flexes, those are your inch markers. Inch markers, yeah. It's basically a seven inch ruler. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have the wound tokens in here. Those are the wound tokens. So those sit on your on the bases yes. of your dudes. There are the denarii. Yeah. Uh, they're numbered um, because they match the cards. The cards. So there'll be a denarii with the one on it which matches the sling. And one that matches the spear, shield, slim dagger. Post hammer, chain and sickle, wiki caltrops, thrown javelin. Was that Castius? Cast how do you say that? Casius. Casius. Is it? Oh, I think so. I might be wrong. Stitch kit, pepper sound, twin short swords, wiki charm, herald tiles. I think these ones are special ones because they've got T next to them, distract and trip. But we'll find out more about them later. Mm -hmm. um, there are the bases. Mm -hmm. so they look like the rebel symbol from yeah, so it's Rebel Wars. Alliance. Yes. Which is odd. But um, it's not. <laughs> Those are the bottoms of the bases. Yeah, so you get a card bottom and then you get a. That'll be for the special. Yeah. Um, we also have these which are. Um, tokens for your team yes. so one of your mob will be um token one two and three and then yep. you, you know which ones so the card which. part goes on the bottom like that as you can see and that leaves you with two sort of what areas there that you can put the um the flesh wound markers whatever they're called these ones yep. and like so. the green ones okay yep. you can buy Scenic base for this with cobblestones on. Uh, they do look pretty cool because the ones that he was, use, he was using at the demo mm -hmm. and they look really nice. Um, what I'll probably do is probably green stuff them or get some cobblestone plastic card mm -hmm. and just fancy these up. And what else do we have? We have um, I think that's it. Oh, got that's these cards. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of something else and I was leaning on them. So in here we have a personal influence marker, uh, which is something, I think how it works, don't quote me, when you win a match, the other person that you've won against signs this, okay. dates it, and then in a future game you can use this against them to oh. uh, get a personal favour. Um, so we have... This is the oh, there's two. This is the guy who's holding the tile. He's the temple guard. Not well. And then we have so one of the things about this, you it was explained that you always get these cards in this set. Whenever they do a box set like this, I think they're doing a couple of fighter sets with about three fighters in each as well. The cards you get in there are set cards. When you buy a random fighter blister, the card you get is randomly generated. Mm -hmm. So you can end up, um, you can buy the cards separate as well, uh, random generated cards. Uh, but the ones you get in here are not randomly generated. 
So we have Rufus, Manlius, Manlius, <laughs> Manlius, Menelius. This is not Menelius. What's like Manlius to me? <laughs> Lucius, Amelia, Olivia, and Cato. This is the, the ones that you start with. Mm -hmm. Um, and the cards don't particularly belong to miniatures, apart from the special person's cards, which are obviously they belong to. Um, so you can actually, as long as it's like a male card, when you've got a male, I don't know, maybe you could have a gladiator named Sue, who's a bloke, <laughs> like the Johnny Cash song, but just a gladiator. You don't have to keep male names. So it's not be stereotypical. <laughs> But you, know, you don't have to have that model with this particular card. You can mm. switch them around. Um, this needs to be opened. Uh, do you want me to open And this needs to be opened. Okay, I will Damn stop, it. I will this stop doing what I'm doing and I'll open those for you. So these ones are all single part miniatures. I'm pretty sure when you buy the fighter sets, the, 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 you get a few options with them. Uh, what I'll do, I'll pause the camera. Oh, I'm going to look embarrassed now. Because <laughs> they do open. <clears throat> yeah, carrying on. Switch them. <laughs> You're in the model. Sure. <laughs> and that guy's got one of those um, pendulum arms. <laughs> pendulum arms? Yeah, like one of those blades on his, his hand. Oh, yeah, one of those were in, uh, forged in fire. Yeah, yeah what... it's, a, it's a weapon. Oh, what was it called? Pendulum. <laughs> Pendulum. I don't know what it's called. How, did you, open, how did you open this? What sauce did you use? <laughs> Where's the other one? Which one? Which one? Okay. Oh. <laughs> She's a witch, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> She's using witchy powers. <laughs> So yeah, burned as a witch. <laughs> there, that's a cool one. I don't work. There's another one. And there is the other one. Right. Cool. So those are the six models. Uh, so you'd have three models each in your starting gangs for this. And then you've got... Um, What have you done here? I've not done anything. <laughs> Take the model out. Take the model out of it. Thank you. That is the guy holding the uh, tile. It's, it looks like a book. Yeah. Does it like tile? But it looks more like a book. And he's got the standard like circular base. Nothing fancy on that. Uh, I think while I'm here. I'm gonna give that to Claire and she can open. <laughs> Big sigh. Right, so the one we got free was Juna. Junior. Junior, yeah. Junior. Mm -hmm. So that's that one more. And again with base. And she comes up with um, pitchfork, basically. Trident and net. It's like a gladiator, then. Yeah. There was a name for them, and it escapes me. I will look it up, though. But they yeah, were... yeah, they all had uh, different names. Yeah, it was in, the Mermillo, wasn't it? Mermillo. Um, yeah, I, th I think if you got the trident and that, you you were pretty much dead. Because <laughs> you, you didn't have much armour. I obviously didn't think a lot of you. Yeah, no, us. it was either you were very, very tough or very, very worthless. <laughs> <laughs> With knowledge in between. Okay, so those are the models. There's nothing to assemble there other than to stick them on their bases. Um... 
before I do that I'll have to have a think and say whether I'm going to green stuff it, which means I can just stick them on now or put some plastic card on there to make it like cobble I'll have a think, I'll let you know in a moment before the video ends anyway right so on to the scenery we have this awesome Swiss scenery which is sat patiently waiting for us I have to be able to open this. Oh, I'm just going to give up. There we go. Yep, cellophane is no match for me. There we go, I win. Just boxes. Just anything else. Mmm. <laughs> smell of mm. wood. I like the smell of your wood. Moving <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> on. <laughs> anyway. So we have some instructions on. Yes, we can go through this. Brilliant. Right, so if you've not, if you've not seen any of our videos on any of the MDF terrain, uh, this is 3mm. This is Swiss's 3mm. It's supposed to the, the thicker sort of like TT combat one, which is usually about 5mm. Um, and it should, most of it should drop off the sprue like that, leaving you with this stuff which I'm not going to throw away it always comes in handy for something um, I think this is the big A frame that you get with it to be honest but yeah it should just push out if for any reason it doesn't push out we're just going to run a knife along the edges and then just push it out um, if you are doing that it's best to run a knife along this back edge as opposed to the front edge that helps stop tearing a curve when you push it out because uh, it does tear even though it's MDF wood. It's just it's just how it works. I think it's because it's multiple layers. It, it can tear a bit of paper. <laughs> but it's all a lot stronger if you've never used it. I do recommend it as a scenery component. It's really good. Um, so we are going to remove all these parts off these separate sprues. That's pretty obvious. That's the bottom one of the bottom parts of the temple. And there's like a lot of scaffolding and stuff around the temple as well, isn't there? So, there is, yeah. yeah. That's where the stuff is. So, so I've got, yeah. Oop, let's see how it's fell out there. All these bits are just falling out. I think these are all scrap. You never know when they're coming under. Um, and there we go. Not a lot of it for Sarissa at the end. They do make a nice terrain, so they do. Right, so let's get on with that. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay, so we've got um, part one here. So what do we have? We have is that G. That's J. G. Um, that's, that's D. D. That's the window. That's um, F. F. It's going to be the middle. Where's that? That bit there. These are a difference. Oh, there's two Fs actually, so I don't think it would. Oh, all right, so it doesn't make any difference. No. Then, does it? And then we have the middle window section. Yeah. Which has got the obviously window on there. Then we have the other F section, which you say. Yeah. And is that D? That we must know, be D. We don't yeah. to cover it all up. But yeah. That's the order in which the walls are going to go into place. So keep that to one. No one thing I did notice is that it's got the windows out. So Sorry? I don't know if you it's got the windows out. No, it's just got the Well windows. you can pop these out. I'm gonna leave them in. I think we should leave them in to be quite honest, yeah. Um I think we should. Mm. Yeah. So then we have C mm -hmm. which is the first part of the floor. There's like there's like three or four floors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to go on the base. I've got attached to my uh, implements so. <laughs> there. Yeah, I've been started off with the cobblestone effect. I decided to go with the green stuff. So you can see there, guys. If you want to see how I did that, post it in the comments. I might do a short video on how I did it. Other than that, they should be ready by the end of the video, I hope. Right, so um, cause I'm going to do that in between these drying, basically. <laughs> Um, right. And you've got um, 
I've got two very small wall sections. Those are E. E and E. E, e and E. Yeah. And then you've got A, which, a, is, which like is like the front step. It's probably something to do with the door, maybe? I don't know. Um, I think it's. Is it like the front step of it? It's like a step, mm -hmm. isn't it? Right, so all these wall sections, they've obviously we've got the little bits poking out, they're all going to go on there. Um, that, obviously has these bits on there, that's going to take up the top part, so it's going to be up here. And so each wall section's got a slot at the bottom and a slot at the top. Top slot, obviously that's going to go in. So when we come back, we should have... This bit here. This bit here, and look at that bit there, it does look like that goes to the back like so which creates like a down bit I suppose that's for going into something underneath maybe I think it's for going into this top bit right. which is G so it looks like to me if you look at that picture so we're going to build it like that uh, we're going to be using PVA glue uh, I'm not going to take any shortcuts for this so it's going to be it's probably going to be a lot of pauses in the video while we have to wait for it to dry uh, so I'm going to go ahead and glue that together as you saw there, and then we're back once we're ready to move on to the next section. Okay guys, here we go, that's not dry by any means, but it has surprisingly sort of a good bit of grip under its own layer there. And putting the top part in is sort of holding it in place as it is. So we can kind of move on. Uh, next up we have the three circles. Um, obviously in decreasing sizes. The top one has um, holes on for all these bottom parts to go on and then the next one down has four holes because four of these sorry I mean, oh, see that's why we should wait till it dries this bit is the only bit that doesn't really sort of sit on but that's one of the deep holes in fact the sooner I get that done the better it'll keep it in place then. so you've got these um, deeper notches and you've got these ones there so the deep ones go through into this one so when you're lining this up make sure you line up your deeper ones and then there are two here and two there, and two there. so again lining up these four with these four and you can line up the column posts these crosses to get the position it's all meant to be in so I'm going to go ahead and actually stick these together and onto this and then that will give these bits a bit more support as well. Um, so we're back once that's done um, go. Okay, so we have our three bases on there. Um, it's quite solid, there's a construction. The next thing we're going to be building is the columns. Um, there are <clears throat> there's eight spaces for columns. There's eight spaces for columns. However, there's only six uh, columns that have actually been built. Um, four of them are fully built and two of them are half under construction. This is one of the fully built columns. Show you that there. Uh, try to figure out uh, how to build it first. It's actually a lot more straightforward than it looks. The key to it really is to line this top part up. So, the first step, you need one of these and you need one of these. Um, yep, that's right, yep. So these two pieces fit together like that. So I'm going to want to glue that. They've actually got a bit of glue in a small dish now. It's a lot easier to apply, especially for doing this. And I'm just using an old brush um, to apply the glue. It's a lot easier than using the massive tool I was using before. Right, so I'm just going to put a bit of glue on that and this together like so right so that's the main structure there next uh, the bottom part it consists of three circles with the make sure you take the middle parts out of these as well there's a, there's a part in the middle of this mm -hmm. which I assume is something later on it's like a small cog make sure you've taken that out and it won't fit in otherwise uh, so you have one there one there you see that on camera and one there, three different sizes and they're going to stack on top of each other so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the smallest of these and I'm just going to feed this on, I'm not going to glue it at this point 
I just want to feed this into place in the next stage. Like that. And then this one come on you. I think all the it's just fine how it goes on really. All the cogs of parts are all the same size. It doesn't matter which way when you go on, it's just sometimes it's a bit easier to just swizzle it around. So that's loose. That's gonna go there. Uh, the next part of these. You'll need four of these pieces here. Um, these are part of the column as well. And what you need to do now is feed these into the, which is the uh, fiddly bit. Because it's got to go through three different, um, there we go, with three. So you feed that into that. push this on a bit more than it needs to be for now, just to keep it in place. Um, and then feed the other one in there. Like that. Into that. And it gets a bit stiff really, because you're actually making it more and more secure the more of these you push in. Right, so now you've got the main part of the column. So the key to this whole thing is getting it to line up. And the best way I've found to do this is actually use this to your advantage. Um, if you press down on this and get that into position, which is where it's going to be going, make sure that's in as far as it'll go. You can push this these pieces down, like so, which helps to line it up. And now your final part of the column is this top piece. Everything has to fit into this. Um, if you have a look on there, you can see um, how the top part goes on. Uh, you've got these circular bits, and then you have sort of like intermittent, if you will. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the word. Uh, so you can see that's going to go on like that. Oh, just another note. On here, it shows these bits as being square. They're not the round. Mm. This K5 piece, the knots were at the round. And they're round in all the pictures, so it's just a printing error on the on this bottom part here. I wonder if they were going to make them square at some point, or at the beginning point, and I thought, now that's not going to work. I wonder if this, because uh, I think they do have some that have square base columns. Oh, right, okay. And that's like a square bit that's fitting on, mm. so I wonder if this is a, a like an image from another file, <sighs> which I thought was just exactly the same, same, but it's not quite the same. So the last thing I'm going to do is glue this on. So this is where we're going to actually put the glue to start with. And we're just going to put it on all these bits. I want you better at using both hands for this. There we go. And then we're just going to line this up. Get it the right way. Like that. I want it easier than the last one. But also make sure that you pull up all the little bits to make sure they meet up. And that is basically your column. Um, so what you can do now is wait for that to dry. When that bit's dried, you can pull that bit off. Or if you're feeling brave, pull this bit off now. Glue this bit on, the three bottom cogs. Uh, again, I'm just going to show you. You could do it here, actually, if you wanted to. But what I want to do is get some glue underneath it. Um, so I'm just pull that out, he says, and I'm just going to glue around that and glue underneath that to secure the bottom part. And then I'm going to do that uh, twice more with the big columns. And the small columns, they're just cross sections. So it's a top and a bottom, and then three rings on the bottom. So they're easier to put together. So I'll come back once they're all done and stuck into place. Okay, so we're back. Uh, just for note, that's the longer of the two columns. Two longer pieces go together. And that's the short of the two columns, two short pieces go together. It goes there. And as you can see, the other columns are all done. On there. One of them did tear at the top, so it has been glued back on. It's pretty sound. I'm happy with that. So we need to do the step part of the front, which is L and M and N, which is these three parts, which is that bit. So you're going to go that, it covers up those other two points, 
and there's two square uh, attachments there. So that needs to go on the bottom, lines up with that. Then that one goes on, make sure the square bits are lined up. And then the last bit is this piece of step here, make sure the three little lines are at the front and that will all wedge under there. So I'm going to glue that in place and then we can move on to the next part. Okay, so the steps are in place, just takes a little bit of force, not too much to push that under there and tension so it keeps it in place. Next up we're going to move on to the top part which is this bit here. So we have, so we have this bit which is going to go on top of the four columns which is where we have four crosses. Which is going to go up there and then we also have um, I think some of these like um, these bits like roofing roof bits. Sections. Yeah, I don't know if they just if they add on or whether mm. they just. All right. So there's some that do have these little bits on the bottom there. Oh, to make those to fit on to fit onto there. So it's like these ones are going to go on there and fit on to there. And then there's two which have nothing. So we'll have a look at that um, as we went along. Uh, what else do we have on here? Uh, we start with some of the scaffolding as well, aren't we? Mm. So I'll stick these bits together and we'll come back to the scaffolding. Okay, so just before we go on to the start of the scaffolding, just to finish this bit off, these three pieces of roof uh, support. There's one with nothing on, it's got a flat end like that. That bit goes on here, and the two it's got two notches on there which go in there, that's that one. And we have two. One's got a lip at the top, one's got a lip at the bottom. The one with the lip at the bottom goes at the back, and the other one goes on this side here. So you can see it's like a jigsaw bit fixed together, and just putting a bit of glue on there as well. So there we are. So now, while that's setting, we can move on to the scaffolding. So what parts do we need for this? I think I think we've got part eight there. Yep. Um, that looks like part one. Yep. Um, is that a part three? Part three. There. Yep. Um. Part six. I think so. There's a five there, isn't there? I, there's a five there, and there's a six. Those three all look very similar, so I don't know if there's any difference in them. Yeah, there is. Oh, there is, isn't there? Yeah. Um. So that's definitely six because it's got two little notches at the bottom. Um, those two are almost identical everywhere. Three and five are pretty much the same. Right. Four is one of the thick sections, isn't it? So we've got seven at the top, which is the smallest. Which is that one there. Yeah. And then we've got four. Which is the second largest. Has it got cuts in it? Yeah. Is that right? And got, yeah. And then we have the, the, the bottom one. one, which is top two, isn't it? Okay, I'll pass that over there the way. So I'm getting ever and ever close to knocking that over. Right, so that actually having a look at this beforehand, that's gonna go there. That looks like it goes there and part five there and part six on the and then we have what we've got here part four so that goes that way around there's there is a notch there for going on top of that and then right so we've got to feed this at the same time so there's a notch there that's going to go there, three slidey sections for that. Um, that bit goes on the front underneath there, and then on top we have a thing that's got three notches cut out, which is going to go on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick that together off camera. Be back in a moment. So there is the scaffolding, part one anyway, done. Uh, that uh, fits on here somewhere. Let's have a look. Alright, so does it just go over the front like that? 
if the air out goes on. There we go. It goes inside, doesn't it? Is that right? I think it is. But which way? Right, so on the bottom we've got these four um, little notches and in here we've got four notches and that is going to fit inside there. And that means you won't be able to paint inside it. Correct. Um, so I'm going to leave that out so this bit, the walls can at least look like they've been done. And then we can put the scaffold in there afterwards. It makes them both easier to paint, actually, because mm. once that's in there, that's not going out. Um, right, yeah, so we'll do that rather than put it in. But there's four holes there and four corresponding bits on there as well. Okay. Just leave that to one side. Right, so we'll move on to the next parts of the scaffold, which are the parts that are holding these pillars up. This consists of these bits here. And these, like almost like bullseye target sight things, are literally they're just going to fit on one on the, one on the, and then four of these long bits around, making like a, a stand, if you will. Uh, so there's two of those in total. And turn it over. Might be able to make out there what I mean by that. So yeah, we've got these like stands. So I'll go ahead and make them and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so there, you can see it finished. There is one, so you can see what I meant. Um, it just goes over the top of these. They're like scaffolding for up the column. And you know, as they were, would be constructing this. And literally it just fits over a bit like the other ones did on the so again, you could leave these off to paint separately if you wanted. Um, I think, should be all right. I think these ones should be alright, to be honest. Yeah. I'm going to glue that on, I'm just going to push it on so you can see it there. There you go. So, the last bit of actual scaffolding um, is this bit here. And this is on like a separate base, so you can move it away or or not, like so, and this is like a stepped part as well, mm -hmm. so, we've got those two are 11, yep, and that one's 9, yep, uh, then you've got 15, yep, There's two more, isn't it? Yeah, 13. 13. And 14. And 14. Um, so all these are just going to fit into this bit here. Oh, sorry, 16, that one. That, is that it last one that I gave around? you is 16. Yeah, so this, you have it so that it's got this um, raised part to the centre, like so. You can see that on there. Uh, so that's the first thing is to put them on. And then um, the these parts are going to fit onto the which is why I have the raised part to the front or centre part so is that number 10? Uh, yeah then that's number these are all the same? those two look very much the same yeah. actually these two are the same and the last one's shorter, shorter. it just goes at the top so I'm going to go ahead and stick that together uh, where does the door go? the door seems to go here there the but I mean I suppose you could have that just leaning up against somewhere perhaps yeah because it's not even being we, put on yet we need to put this in place um, it looks like the door sort of the frames attached when, it's, when it's, we saw the one that was built the edge of the door was open didn't they mm. and the frame was standing it up but this could basically be anywhere waiting to be put on mm. uh, so could the frame part so you can take the frame part off, stick the frame on and leave the door separate. You can do it any way you want. There isn't really enough room on there to stick a, um, a, hinge. a hinge, like the, the other hinges I've used on my other buildings. Uh, but again, that's probably one of the reasons why I wouldn't stick this on, because half the temple's missing, so there's plenty of access points, if you will. Um, 
Right, so let's get this bit built and then we'll be back in a second. Okay guys, so there is the staircase there. Pretty cool, goes all the way up. Now as we're coming to the end of the build, this is where I start to find bits and wonder what they're for. And as I was staring at these, it became apparent that I'd missed something. So we have these long sections here and long short sections there. So any guess is what I missed. And it is on the instructions so I did miss it. Back to the two columns, the half built ones. Um, these short sections make up the, the sort of in betweeny ridges of the short column and the long column. So thankfully I didn't glue those bits on. Oh that's a bit stuck though. But I'll sort that out afterwards. Um, before before the end. It's just because there's a little Yeah, there is, isn't there? I'll pull it out yeah, before. Um, but they just need taking off. And then these bits slotting around the edge, gluing. Um, that one I can use to actually set it in place. That one as well, actually, because of where it is. Mm. But I'll probably end up gluing them in place as well. So I might just do that. I can use them to sort of secure it. So I'll do that afterwards so we can get on with the uh, A frame with this bit. So the last part is um, this. So it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, we have three A frame sections. We have uh, this bit there and that bit there. Like so. And in the middle, we have the A frame that's got these other parts on. So, from the A-frame in the middle, we have these two little circular parts with squares cut out. These come out the centre of these, which is quite important. So these are just going to fit on here. I'm going to have to glue them on, obviously. That's a, that went on a little bit too easily. <laughs> and that one, that was a bit stiffer. There we go. On that. And then, we also have these bits on the base. So you can see these two parts are going to go in there and in there, that's where it gets interesting because that's how these bits fit in and turn. That's why they came out of the in the first place. Um, we have these bottom parts here. Now there's three hoops. They go at the, the end there. And we have six of these little bits here. And they go um, facing away from the A-frame because they're like tie-off points for the A-frame. So you, have, you just glue them in facing that way. Like pegs in the ground I imagine. Um, so there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six of those. And the last bit for this is the top part of the frame. Which is these parts here. So we have obviously these bits at the top there. We have this bit here and we have this bit here. And then this little bit here. Should test fit this, but I didn't. Goes like that, and then on the like that, leaving those bits there, which are going to go through all these top parts. There, you can see that on there. There's two little holes, and they're going to go through all three of these. Right, so I'm going to construct that. What we don't have is any thread or rope substance to actually set up the pulley. There's none that came with this, and I don't really have anything that's suitable. I'll have a look around, and if I find anything while I'm away, I'll be back and I'll, I'll thread it and everything, but um, we'll have a look. So, and I'll sort these out as well. So I'll come back with all this done. Oh, one last thing. Uh, of all the things that we... I haven't seen this on there, actually. What's that? On any of the instructions. The little cog sections that are left over. Oh, these, over. these things here. Yeah. yeah. On the picture on the front of the box, we've got these bits here where columns would go, but they haven't built them yet. Mm -hmm. And then we have all these little sections here, which are like half-constructed columns. Yeah, you can build them so up. So you can way. build them up. You can put them there. Because columns are built in sections like this, you can have it so like they've fallen over if you want it. <laughs> you can have it however you want, really. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's up to Claire because it's hers, so whether she wants them on or off or half built or whatever, mm. it's entirely up to her. Yeah. So I'll let her make the decision. So when we come back, we should have all the bits finished. And I still don't know what these four parts are for. 
No, I, I can't see anything in the first bit. I didn't bit. take them off, because they're small bits, I didn't take them off the screw, I just brought the screw off. But I can't see where they go. They look like a vent, but they're actually four separate... Four? Can't count. Five separate little uh, nodules. I can't see them anywhere on here, but I'll have a look and mm. I'll, I'll see if I can find them. Other than that, we'll be back when it's all finished. Okay, so that's the uh, A-frame done. Uh, I, I did find this stuff, it is elastic. Um, I think it's like hat elastic or something like that, it's thin elastic. And I put some loops in there. What I've actually done is invertly built a catapult, because I've pushed that about far enough. I <laughs> can fly this <laughs> way. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is try to find a way to weight that down to make it look like it's stretching. Um, what I've done here, i just got some wire and some matchsticks and maybe a little pallet. So hopefully something heavy will sit on there. Watch this fall off. Or something like that. The model on there or some bricks or something like it's transporting some of the materials. Mm -hmm. um, it looks alright. Um, yeah. Like, Sorry what I'm doing when I'm painting it. Uh, but that's that. That's the... Uh, a frame done. Obviously, I've added that on. But uh, what I might also do is get some plastic or cobblestone on and uh, use it on the bases here, and then put some rubble as well, like they built it up over mm -hmm. rubble while there's building works going on, so it blends in a bit better. Uh, also, finished off the models. Um, as you saw one there. There we go. That's the free model we got. Yep. <laughs> so finished that one off. Um, did, did the green stuff on the base and stuck the card discs on the bottom as well. So now they are completed. That is it basically. Mm -hmm. uh, it took, took a little while to let, let things sort of set and dry. So it takes a while to put it together. Uh, and obviously if you want to do the bases like that, it takes a little bit longer. You've got to make sure the green stuff dries. It hasn't taken too long. Though. It's been alright. Pretty straightforward so far. Looks good. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to playing this, which is what we're going to do in the next video. Yes. Uh, for Gangs of Rome. Actually, we might be the video after because we do have some. We do have the mobs. We do actually. Yes. So I might do a very short video unboxing. We got three mobs: Primus, Secondus, Secondus, Secondus and Tertius. Secondus and Tertius. Yeah. Uh, might do a short video on them because there's nothing really to put together, just to show you what the, what they're like, the models. Mm -hmm. um, so I might do a short video on that, and the video after that we'll actually play the game. Yes. Okay. So thank you for watching, uh, please like and subscribe, put in the comments if you want to see more Gangs of Rome, and uh, take care guys. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye.